Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you this game from the War of the Ring 2023 World Tournament. We are in the top eight. I am playing Sunny L. This is our second game, and I won the first game as Shadow. And so if I win this, I'm on to the top four, and I am playing Free People now. And... These, oh, by the way, these games have, my games with Sunny L have slightly more uh, excitement because if you make it to the top four, then there's a bronze match. So even if you lose in the top four, you still get to play another match for third place. So um, this this is an exciting one. And we are in the league. There's a league uh, that lasts for the entire year. And so this is also counting as our league games. Okay, so an exciting game. We'll see what happens. So I'm free people. I have two cards that are not particularly playable. Yes, theoretically, I could play Mithril Coat and Sting, but it's risky if uh, they get Nazgul Strike or Worn with Sorrow and Toil. You can end up losing it before you make it to Mordor. They get Hill Trolls and Morgul Wound. Not, per you know, maybe you play Hill Trolls turn one. Usually it's better to save it for a reinforcement where you need it, but they might do it. They only rolled one muster. They allocated an eye and only rolled one muster. So not great, but sometimes that's how it goes. All right, I start off by moving the fellowship and they hit me. That's fair. They got three eyes, a little worse than 50% chance, but still. Uh, and they reveal me right away. So that is an unpleasant tile <laughs> because... Uh, with a with a higher value corruption damage, I would just lose Gandalf, and that'd be fine. Uh, if it's a reveal, I could still lose Gandalf and then hide with one of these dice. But now I can't, like I can't do anything. I just have to be revealed. Um, so Fellowship gets revealed into Fords of Brunen, and then um, they they started with Morgul Wound, so you can get two corruption right now out of that. And they, wow, two, corru two corruption, Morgul Wound, turn one? No? All right. Um, they draw a character card. I guess, what? I guess they're just baiting me? Because they know that I can't hide right now? So might as well see. If you get something like Breaking of the Fellowship, you could play that instead of Morgul Wound. I mean, Morgul Wound is likely still going to be playable for a while, but all right. Um, all right, I draw a strategy card myself. Obviously a little sad to not have something playable with Gandalf as guide, but that's how it goes sometimes. I see, they wanted to move Nazgul around. All right, they're putting a lot of corruption pressure on the Fellowship. We'll see how many eyes they allocate next round. I muster Elves towards war. They muster Isengard towards war. I muster Elves towards war again, and they move armies. They go Baradur to Gorgoroth and Dol Guldur to South Anduin Vale. Obviously, they would like to, if I'm, if they're going to play a corruption game, they would like to take over Lorien. They would like to take over Minas Tirith so that I cannot heal successfully there. I draw Aomer. I'm happy to see that. That's a very nice card. And Eagles are coming. Not a very useful playable card, but Heroic Death is a powerful defensive card. They get Ringwraiths are Abroad and Ulug High. Perfectly fine cards. They allocate only one eye here. Interesting. So if you're playing Corruption Game, yeah, maybe, why, maybe allocate more. I guess they want to make sure they get their musters in so they get... Um, Saruman. All right. I am reasonably happy with this role. I could, I could just go and get Aragorn guaranteed right here. I wonder if that's worth it. Would you crown Aragorn right here? Could be fun. Or do you just move the Fellowship a bunch and kill off Gandalf and then wait until next round to roll the Will of the West. Yeah, I can't even... Yeah, interesting. All right, so I hide the Fellowship. That's reasonable. 
They um, get Sauron to war. I pass once. They move armies around. They're going to go uh, get to Dimmel Dale and then Morinon. I move the Fellowship once. They miss. And they play Ulog High to power up this army in Dimmel Dale. So they were drawing character cards quite a bit. It makes me think they might have something mean for the Fellowship. We'll see what happens. I move again because at this point I'm just going to kill off Gandalf. Yeah, this would have been an interesting turn if I had just gone to crown Aragorn. Why didn't I do that? All right. They hit me this time, which is certainly fair, and they get a three. So that is great for me. Very happy to lose Gandalf efficiently. I can slow down. I don't need to do anything special. I, Yeah, I wonder why I saved this. I guess I'm saving this Will of the West to delay Saruman, but how much of a difference does that really make? I could have played Aomer with this and cycled an extra strategy card before Gandalf died. All right, and now they're going to play Orc Patrol, right, and hopefully reveal me. They have a 4 out of 14 chance of revealing me. That's a 28% chance of revealing me into Moria right now, and they get an eye. So sad for them. Good for me. Uh, I get the elves all the way to war because clearly they're going to be attacking into Lorien, and I would rather get to muster in there before this army attacks. So that's probably also why I saved this and not and didn't play Aomer. So good job, past Ira. Uh, better better to get the elves to war and uh, muster into Lorien before they get besieged. All right. Um, they get the Witch King instead of Saruman. It doesn't really matter. They were getting one minion either way. Um, this does help them a little, uh, particularly if they have something like Black Captain Commands, but it, this, is, this is fine. I, I don't... I didn't actually give them any extra dice than, than they would have otherwise. Oh, and I did have the Red Arrow. So I don't really mind that Gondor is now active because now I can play the Red Arrow for the combat if, or for the card effect if I want. All right. So, um, oh, right. So the tricky thing about this situation is I'm at two movement and I'm, I'm, I'm like risking being over um, Moria. So I might need to move the Fellowship as my first action instead of mustering in Lorien as my first action. It would be pretty risky to not move the Fellowship. They did just play Orc Patrol, but there's still Nazgul Strike, Nazgul Search, Foul Thing, and Isildur's Bane that they could have drawn. All right. They allocate one eye. They roll three more. And this crazy roll of no, no musters. Wow. All right. Um, I roll. What did I roll? All right. So I get an incredibly flexible roll. I'm not worried about Day Without Dawn. I am worried about the Fellowship getting messed with. Do I muster first in Lorien or do I move? All right, so I risk getting revealed into Moria because my thinking is, all right, if they reveal me into Moria with some tile drawing card, I'm going to get to muster again in Lorien. So I'm effectively getting two elites at the expense of some possible corruption damage to the Fellowship. Like, I don't want the Fellowship to take corruption damage and get revealed in Moria. That would be very bad. But the more time I have and the stronger Lorien is, the slower the Fellowship can go and the other options I have. So, all right, so that's what I'm thinking. Um, they draw a character card now because they're like, all right, if you're going to sit there, I guess I'll... All right, and now I'm guessing I'm going to go ahead and move the Fellowship. Yeah. All right, so I was like, one elite was worth it. Two elites, I don't, I'm going to go ahead and move along. So they hit me with that Nazgul. Good job, Nazgul and Fords of Bruin in. Um, and, you know, credit to them, credit to Sonny for putting these Nazgul out here turn one. They, they did 
commit to causing trouble for the fellowship. And they spent an action die to do that. All right. Um, and I get revealed. So, you know, not a huge chance of getting revealed there, like about probably a little more than 50% to hit. Yeah, a little more than 50% to hit, a little more than 50% to get drawn. Probably only like 30 or 35% chance of actually getting revealed on that move. But so it goes. So I get revealed and then um, they get to draw an extra tile and it's another eye. So definitely a little unlucky with their um, extra tile draws from Orc Patrol and from Moria. What was the expected corruption on that? Probably close to one. So it's not crazy. Um, all right. They play Morgul Wound now and get their two corruption. I bring Gandalf into play. They... What do they do? They play on on they went because they don't want to have too many cards in their hand. And then they and then I play red arrow here. So I guess I'm worried about mustering too much in Lorien because the force pool of the of the elves is not so huge and they could pivot this army from Dimrel Dale elsewhere. I think if they bring more units to Dimrel Dale, then I would be tempted to muster again in Lorien. But at least the moment, I feel like this is a this is a standstill and I'd rather make Lorien a decently hard fight and then Rivendell and Woodland Realm can still hold with extra reinforcements. Um the other thing is I could easily have Celeborns. I mean not easily, but there's a chance that I have Celeborns and and it may seem like I do. So I'm not in a rush to muster there. And even though I don't, I, I have a chance to draw it later. So, all right, Red Arrow gets Rohan towards war and one and a half musters worth of units in Edoras, so that's good. They move armies along. They are bringing North Dunland to Moria and Morinon to Daggerlad. And they're still only at eight dice because they didn't roll any musters this round pretty unlucky to not be able to get Saruman on this round. All right. Um, and that was a whole play where I got to play Red Arrow because the Witch King was in play. Did I have to play Red Arrow there? No, but, you know, it was pleasant. All right. Um, what do I discard here? I have, like, Help and Look For is a good combat effect. I'm probably not going to play it um, for for the card effect. I definitely like Aomer... Three Angels Archers, maybe I get rid of because I can just muster normally in there, but it is useful if I happen to not roll a lot of musters and this army in Daggerlad could come up to Woodland Realm. So we'll see what happens. They draw Corsairs of Umbar. Very nice to draw that. I get rid of the Ents because I feel like they're probably not attacking in Rohan very soon. All right, they allocate three eyes here. So they are definitely, what they thought, no, wait, okay. Yes, they do allocate three eyes now. Um, and, whoa, no, they changed their mind. Okay. <laughs> they allocate one eye and roll none. Very different. Uh, I get this roll, which is fine. Um, I'm probably going to hide. Yeah. So I hide with the fellowship with the muster die. They move armies along. They do seem to be coming up. And so maybe that was a slight inaccuracy there. Maybe I should have hidden with the character die. They move not to No Man Land from Daggerlad, but they move to Eastern Emin Wheel. And I guess they're thinking if they come up to Rivendell, that's not going to be very good for them. I muster again in Lorien now. Okay. Because this army in Dimrel Dale... Like, what else are you going to do with it? Are you not going to attack Lorien? If you go somewhere else, okay. But now I can heal in Lorien a bit. We'll see. They get Saruman, obviously. They play Ringwraiths or Abroad to move Nazgul around and attack into Lorien. Okay. They leave one Nazgul in Dimrel Dale. I'm going to pass. They attack in Lorien, and they're cycling character cards. Probably Dreadful Spells, I guess. Yeah, they play Devilry of Orthanc because they don't care about dreadful spells. They just want to mess with the Fellowship. 
I play help on look for to or no quarter to try and deal damage to them. They get two hits, and I get three hits back. I lose an elite because I don't want to use up these two regulars for reinforcement in case they go for Rivendell or um, Woodland Realm. Maybe that's dumb. I, th I think they're going to stop this combat. Yeah, so. All right, I move the Fellowship now. They hit me on a six. Wow, they allocated. <laughs> wow, yeah, who needs a bunch of eyes? Just roll sixes. That's good. And then they reveal me, so not great for me. I'm revealed in Parth Calibrant. They play Worn with Sorrow and Toil now. All right, I definitely don't like that because I have Mithril Coat and Sting in hand. Um, I hide, do I think? Wait, maybe, okay. I have Strider. So even though um, they revealed me on that, I better to use Strider's ability. So I hide with the Muster Die. They're not gonna be able to besiege anywhere else too productively this round. So um, they move to Western Emin Wheel I now move the fellowship again. This is only hitting me on a on a you know one third chance. So they miss me on that one. Okay, and now they get their army to Druid and Forest. So they're prepared to besiege Minas Tirith. And at the start of next round, hopefully I'm gonna roll a um army movement so I can get a regular from Osgiliath into Minas Tirith. I have, I'm probably gonna get rid of Horn of Gondor. The Fellowship is doing okay. Is it really worth it to play Horn of Gondor? I don't know, I could. What would you get rid of here? The other thing is, uh, there's Worn with Sorrow and Toil. So am I planning on declaring in Minas Tirith to get rid of Worn with Sorrow and Toil? If not, yeah. Maybe it's worth keeping Horn of Gondor and then getting rid of Wisdom of Elrond. Confusion is a powerful combat effect. All right, I do get rid of Horn of Gondor. My thinking is, I don't know what. I guess I'm just going to do without Mithril Coat and Sting. That's how it goes sometimes. All right, they allocate one eye, roll two more. So their military is is just going a little slowly. I get this painful roll of only one movement. I, I think I wanted two movement to get to Minas Tirith or just more movement to keep the fellowship going. I did get my army movement at least, so that's something. I get a regular into Minas Tirith, and I get um, these armies from Edoras into Westamnet to prepare. Um, the problem is I did not get any more army movement, so if they attack into Helm's Deep, I'm going to have a painful choice of spending a ring to move these units in. We'll see what they do. I got rid of my Ents also, so I'm not, like, I can't even threaten that. All right, they move. They move some armies onto the Fellowship and Eastamnet because why not? It's a little weird now that they can't besiege Minas Tirith from Druid and Forest since they don't have Nazgul there anymore. Um, but they are getting an extra reroll on Eastamnet when I move. So I think it was the right play to get the regular into Minas Tirith first. Maybe I should have just moved right away. I think that extra, those two extra sixes, like, yeah, it certainly increases their chances. All right, interesting. All right, and now they're just spreading out armies to keep the fellowship hunted no matter where they go. That's pretty cool. So they're playing a corruption game, but they didn't allocate that many eyes. All right. So now I start getting Rohan towards war. My thinking is these guys in Westamnet can attack into Eastamnet. And in the worst case, if they muster up an Orthanc and attack in, I can just muster the hard way into Helm's Deep. All right, so they get the Southrons and Easterlings towards war. They play many kings. That's great. That can be an effective attack up north, either in Erebor or Woodland Realm, if I ever um, get caught without musters up there. I am happy to have Thrandall's Archers in case. And um, I get Rohan all the way to war. So... Normally we don't see Rohan to war on turn five, but with the help of the red arrow, that makes it a little easier. And I still have another muster for Rohan. They're getting more Nazgul. I play Aomer. Weird. So I could have just mustered the hard way in Eastamnet and then saved 
Aomer as a Palantir muster later, but I guess my thinking is I'm going to have to discard cards in hand anyway. Um, might as well get an extra leader. If I'm going to be attacking with this army, I can go up to Dole Golder. I can certainly clear out this army on the Fellowship in Eastamnet. All right, so they play Orcs Multiplying again. All right, so I guess I'm not going up to Dole Golder. Fine. And now I think I move the Fellowship anyway, because even with five dice, it's just not that. It's like only a little bit better than 50% chance. And I don't want to get revealed, but many tiles do not reveal me. So I move, and they do hit me, but I'm not revealed. Okay, so I take one corruption. Maybe I should have played Horn of Gondor. I mean, could have kept Horn of Gondor. I didn't have a lot of extra uh, character dice that round anyway. So what do I think of this round? I mean, as free people, like I got one movement. I did pull a tile out. That's not great, but... You know, maybe next turn I can declare in Minas Tirith. Possible. Get rid of Warnosar and Toil, save Mithrakot and Sting. I did get Rohan to war. Like, their military is going super slowly. Ah, they play Nazgul Strike. Okay, very nice. They're going to reposition Nazgul. They're going to... Okay, they're going to take out... They're, get, they're giving up on Lorien because the Fellowship's not healing there. They're going to try and take out Minas Tirith as quickly as possible. It's going to be a little hard for them to take Minas Tirith with this army. All right, so Nazgul Strike. They get they get um, a Nazgul in Near Harad. I probably would have put it in Far Harad in case you get a whole bunch of character dice. At least you can move this army in. All right, I guess they figure, sure, we're going to get at least one army movement next round. All right, they... Um, oh, and they have Corsairs. Right, right, right. So this aren't... This army can go from from um, near Harad to Umbar and then attack into Dol Amroth right away. That's pretty cool. All right, and they do have Grand, so maybe they can take out Minas Tirith. It's going to be close. All right, Nazgul Strike. Let's see what happens. They get one hit. That's certainly fair uh, on five dice. You expect even a little more than that. All right, let's see if they reveal me. Don't reveal me, which... Yeah, I mean, they were about 50-50 to reveal me there. I think I'm taking a random here. It's a little risky, but I don't want to go up too high on corruption. Like, seven corruption is a lot. They haven't played Isildur's Bane yet. I don't want to lose Mithril Coat and Sting, so maybe I should have kept Horn of Gondor. I would have already used up Horn of Gondor. Uh, no, it would have been in my hand. So it would have just increased the chances of keeping Mithril Coat and Sting. But I'm happy to have these other cards as playable cards. And I played Aomer this turn. I guess I didn't need Aomer. I didn't think I was going to roll that many musters. All right. So I think all these choices are reasonable. I'm not happy to see Nazgul strike, but that happens. I think I lose a random companion. It is Legolas. Okay. That's a perfectly good draw. I take one corruption and do I lose Mithril Coat and Sting? Yeah. Oh, they forget Worn with Sorrow and Toil. Ah, okay. So, right, I remember this. I waited. So th I lost I lost Legolas, and then I just didn't say anything. I just sat there doing nothing. And then I waited so long, they eventually said, okay, like, do you want to do anything? What's going on? And I was like, okay. Right, this is, so, right. So this is an optional effect because it says the fellowship is taken, if a fellowship is taken as a casualty, you may also discard one of the free people's players cards. So if I were playing against a new player, I would just tell them, no problem. In a tournament game, top eight, like I waited. I didn't rush. I was just sitting here so long that they had to say something to me. So I feel like, um, I feel like that's acceptable sportsmanship. Do I, do I, ha should I have re reminded them? I, I don't know. My, the, sort of where I am, if it's a tournament game against somebody who's not a beginner, I will wait so long that they have to say something to me. <laughs> and if they say, are you done? <laughs> like, okay, then I'll be like, okay, let's move on. But um, all right. So fair enough. There was a 50% chance of getting rid of Mithril Coat and Sting. All right. 
Um, okay, moving on to next round. I get rid of Kindred of Glorfindel. I certainly don't need that. That's my le least valuable card. And um, the Fellowship just stays where they are because it doesn't really help to um, declare them. And this army in Rohan can like attack that and free free the Fellowship from patrols by orcs. All right, they allocate three eyes now. They roll one more and I get a bunch of character movement. I'm probably fine with that. Uh, I get one muster for more mustering in Rohan if I want. I think that's actually a perfectly fine roll. I, I have um, File of Galadriel that I can play in advance. So, all right. Um, I start by playing File of Galadriel. That's fine. They get the Southrounds and Easterlings all the way to war. I muster a regular in Westham Net and a regular in Helm's Deep. And that way I have a full five combat strength in Westham Net and two leadership. Feeling pretty good, Aomer. Are you going to help the Fellowship out? All right, so they have to attack into Minas Tirith because they see that I'm planning on declaring there. They... Um, yeah, they don't have anything that can mess with the Fellowship directly. So maybe they're planning on cycling Grand, not as a not playing it, but just to cycle the card and trying to draw into more character cards to mess with the Fellowship. So um, Gondor gets advanced towards war. And, and this is interesting because I did not um, save my muster. They can move armies to Umbar and play Corsairs of Umbar this round before I get to muster anything in Dol Amroth. So, yeah, I don't know if they're doing that, actually. This round, it seems like they're probably attacking and letting Go letting Gondor go to war and then saving this character die to be able to play whatever character card they redraw. I mean, they're just going, they're just going on a um, corruption strategy, so they don't actually care. Maybe they're not even going to play Corsairs of Umbar, they're just going to try and take out Minas Tirith so the Fellowship can't heal. All right, let's see what happens. I attack into Eastamnet. That seems good. A nice use of my character die. I don't play a card. It's fine. They don't get any. They do get a hit back. The Nazgul gets a hit. That Nazgul, I'm going to say, is the Nazgul from Fords of Bruinen. So good job, Nazgul. You have been fighting very effectively. And uh, I take one hit. Now, why did I lose a regular there? I have no idea. <laughs> I remember reviewing this game after it happened. I was like, why did I lose a regular instead of going from an elite to uh, a regular? Like, yeah, I guess the Rohan, I mean, whatever. I have tons of, I have tons of um, reinforcements still. Um, what, what am I doing? Like this army can come down and mess with the army in Minas Tirith. Um, also, did I have to move everybody in? Maybe I should have kept some so that I could reinforce Helm's Deep. I don't know. That's weird. I, that was just a weird play. All right. They attack into Minas Tirith now, right? Their whole plan is just corruption, corruption. They, I play, um, right, they play Grand. I play Confusion here because, you know, whatever it is, Confusion is useful. Um, they uh, forfeit four. They get one hit against me, none against themselves, and I get one hit against them. All right. Fine. I downgrade the elite and they redraw Lure of the Ring. So not something that's going to stop the Fellowship from declaring in Minas Tirith. Um, I move the Fellowship now and hopefully don't get hit. They have 50% chance, basically, of hitting me. They do hit me. That's nice. Maybe not get revealed to Corruption. All right. So they forgot Warren with Sauron Toil before. I think I just lose another random here and hope it's not Strider. I mean, if it is, it is. It's not the end of the world. Um, They're going very slowly militarily. So random, you get a hobbit. So, okay. Um, I don't love taking one corruption. Um, and that actually generates an additional loss uh, from Warren with Sauron Toil when normally you can use the Hobbit Guide ability. So, but that happens. Okay, they remember that they forgot Warren with Sauron Toil. I was waiting again. <laughs> That's what was happening. I was waiting again. And this time they were like, why are they waiting again? 
Uh, all right, so there we go. Worn with sorrow and toil. So, um, but it get it gets missed. So I still keep mithril coat and sting. That was certainly uh, a bit of good luck. And um, there is Mary um, in Eastham Net. And maybe if there was a hundred percent chance of losing mithril coat and sting, you could imagine like I lost eagles last time, and then. Um, I played Filed Galadriel. I probably would have just taken two Corruption to keep Mithril Coat and Sting guaranteed uh, because I think it's likely I'm going to declare in Minas Tirith now. And okay, so so probably I'd end up with Mithril Coat and Sting either way given one random draw that hits um, the Eagles are coming. All right, so Mary joins the forces in Eastham Net. Three leadership. Why don't I have a five combat strength i have no idea i still have no idea all right the nazgul move i'm definitely not moving nazgul around again um also remember when i said that i wasn't going to play help unlooked for a long time ago um this would be such a good chance for help unlooked for didn't i play it yeah i used it as a um as a combat effect but this is like such a perfect God, that would be a perfect help on look for moment, right? I move, I'm going to move uh, this army from East and to Druid and Forest. Then I play help on look for, I have five units inside the stronghold. Like, oh my gosh. All right. So I move Mary down. They're going to try and take out the Witch King. And let's see. The My opponent notices that the Witch King is entirely surrounded by Mary. And um, has no place to retreat. So instead of moving armies, they... Right, but they know that Help Unlooked For is used up, which is which is sad. Um, but they attack into they attack into Asgiliath, which is smart. They get a hit. Um, I don't get any. And now I'm like, why? Five combat strength. Okay. Um... All right, so I draw Smeagol Helps Nice Master and Immerhill of Dol Amroth, which I'm happy to see. They get um, another red tile. They get rid of Threats and Promises. That makes sense. And I declare the Fellowship into the Siege of Minas Tirith because I need to heal. I want to get rid of Worn with Sorrow and Toil. And um, it's certainly worth... It's certainly worth keeping Mithril Coat and Sting. I think if I didn't have Mithril Coat and Sting in hand, maybe I would just press on. But... With this, like healing one and keeping Mithril Coat and Sting is quite quite valuable. So I think it's worth the extra step. The fellowship, the military is going slow enough that I mean they literally have zero zero victory points on turn seven. Um, so better to heal while I can. If it takes an extra step, it's probably worth it. All right. So they allocate one eye because they anticipate, I guess, that the fellowship is staying there and. Okay, no, they allocate two eyes and they roll two more. And then I get this roll of no musters. I absolutely wanted musters to be able to muster up Helm's Deep, to be able to muster up in, in Dol Amroth. Um, let me pause for one second. Okay, so this is, as I was saying, a actually quite a bad roll for me for no musters. I, I want to just let the Fellowship heal in Minas Tirith as long as I can. I'll make the best of it. I'll draw a character card probably. Or no, I'll probably use the Palantir to play um, Immerhill of Dol Amroth. I'm probably going to play Smeagol Helps Nice Master. And I'm probably going to also play Mithril Coat and Sting because Warm with Sorrow and Toil is gone and Nazgul Strike is gone. So, and maybe I'm going to attack with um, this army once. So it's not a horrible roll, but I really would have liked at least one muster. All right. So I start by attacking into Minas Tirith with Mary. Now, maybe that's wrong. Maybe I should move Gandalf there first. Yeah. Because if I move Gandalf there first, then they don't get any leadership. And then it's a lot scarier. I wish I had five combat dice. All right. Um, okay, so I just attack in. I figure seven hit points is worth it against eight. 
but they're rolling five. So it's it's pretty tough. All right, let's see what happens. Um, I play Valor. They don't play any card because they want to save all of their comp all of their character cards. I guess they want to save Lord of the Rings since that does corruption damage. Probably two corruption damage. All right, I get only two hits. They get two hits back. Not really what I want to see. And then I press here because it's a little dangerous for them. Especially with Sudden Strike or something like that. But I don't have Sudden Strike. So they boldly stay. And yeah, I think that's the right call. It's a little risky, but they stay. And I don't have a card to play here. Because I really want to save Shield Wall. Maybe, maybe I play Blade of Westerness to kill the Witch King. I have a decent chance of killing off the Witch King. But... I like Mithrocoat and Sting for purposes of keeping the Fellowship alive. While I do want to slow down the military game, Mithrocoat and Sting is such a powerful corruption saver in Mordor. Um, they have played at least one red tile. They're cycling their character cards. They probably have more. I mean, they do actually have two more. Um, so I think I'm just holding on to Mithrocoat and Sting. That was, yeah. All right. So um, I get two hits. They get four hits back. So that's bad. I have to stop. Mary is done. The Witch King holds the Siege of Minas Tirith. So exciting, but yeah. Why didn't I move Gandalf in first? I don't know. Why didn't I have five combat strength there? I don't know. Sad. Okay. Uh, they move armies. I play Smeagol Helps Nice Master. I, right, the, we remember that the Fellowship is actually at zero movement, which obviously they are. And um, I pass. And now they move to Umbar. And I'm like, oh, no. They have Corsairs of Umbar. And I didn't roll a single muster. So I have to give them a stupid ring to muster into Dol Amroth the hard way. Sad. All right. So I... I properly read that they have Corsairs of Umbar and I muster into Dol Amroth. I think that's the right play. My plan is I just want to put up a solid military defense and, um, you know, that's, that's what I have to do. So they do have Corsairs of Umbar. They play it. I had to give them a ring, which was unpleasant, but... Um, and then I play Emberhill of Dol Amroth. So at least there's like a decent defense. It would have been much better if I didn't have to spend a ring on that. And they muster an elite into Minus Morgul. And then I play Mithril Coat and Sting now because it's going to stick on the board until I'm ready to use it. All right. They play Shelob's Lair with their character die because they're not in any rush to attack. And they actually can't move this army from Minus Morgul towards Minas Tirith. So... Um, they're probably happy to see Breaking of the Fellowship. I have Fearfire Foes, and there's there and back again. Brave Stand is quite quite useful. Um, not quite useful, but could be useful with Mary. Um, all right, let's see what we roll. So next round, they allocate two eyes again. At some point, I'm going to start moving the Fellowship. They only roll one character die. I mean, one Palantir. But they have a ring, so... All right, let's see what I roll. I get a more flexible roll this time. So I um, definitely declare the Fellowship again to heal another one. I'm down from six to four, so that's better. Um, and am I going to start moving the Fellowship this round? I don't know. The military is still going slowly. So I think I'm just going to try and cause trouble militarily. Um, I start with a muster so obviously i don't want day without dawn to hit me but mustering is good and i want to defend pilar gear from these three regulars let's see what they do they move their big army into um south athelion because they want to reinforce minas tirith as soon as possible 
So I think that makes a lot of sense. I now, and then they take Lamadon, fine. I now move my elite and regular from Pelargir to Asgiliath and then Mary and the Rohan leaders, Aomer there, uh, into Asgiliath because they have this army uh, movement and um, and so now I actually delay them by half a move by making forcing them to attack in Asgiliath and I have scouts. So if they attack into Asgiliath, I can play scouts to Druid and Forest or Lasarnak or whatever and then attack into Minas Tirith possibly forcing the Witch King to retreat, um, which would be pretty awesome. Again, if I had Sudden Strike, that would be so awesome because I have three leadership. All right. Anyway, so I move there. They muster. Right. And so the risk was, the risk was if I, like, if they attack me and I play scouts, I can move to North Athelion and then um, just move for free into Minus Morgul. So they don't want to deal with that. So they muster in Minus Morgul. Um and if I had through a day and a night, then and th then I could move to North Athelion and then through a day and a night into um, Mornon. So that's, I think, a very reasonable choice of mustering. They had an extra muster die anyway. Um, I draw a character card. So, um, yeah, wouldn't it have been nice to have Sudden Strike there? That would have been good. Uh, I also am now thinking maybe Boromir gets separated into Minas Tirith now that I've drawn House of Stewards. I wonder, yeah, if I had ordered things slightly differently. Now that I see House of Stewards, all right, what do they do? They attack into South Athelion. They attack into Osgiliath. And... Um, I play scouts. They were obviously trying to kill off that army, um, but I have scouts because I don't want to mess around with taking any hits. And now I have an opportunity to attack the Witch King. And if I manage to get three extra leadership, possibly even this elite in, like is the Witch King going to stick around? All right, so wouldn't it be nice if I had Gandalf there? Man, just these these minor inaccuracies, like even just one or two hit points of difference against either the Rohan army or against the Gandalf army would be would be huge. Huge. They would have to retreat for sure. All right, so Mary tries again. Uh, I'm going to play Brave Stand. They probably have... All right, so they played Dread and Despair probably. Yeah, so... I reduce their um, combat dice by one. They reduce mine by two. Um, I get one hit. They get two hits. Really sad. And so now, if I had Sudden Strike, like this is really risky, I think I press. And I think they properly read that I... Um, all right, so I press... Because, like, what else is Mary going to do? I don't know. Mary could have stuck around and retreated to fold and come back to Helm's Deep. All right, but whatever. Mary presses. And I'm just hoping that they retreat. Like, I really want them to retreat. But they are bold. And the Witch King stays. Um, they redraw Isildur's Bane. And now I don't have a card to play. I'm saving House of Stewards for Boromir. But they're maybe going to take out Minas Tirith this round. So I say I really wanted to have a sudden strike. Yeah, but I don't. And um, I get only one hit and they get two hits. So, you know, Aomer, Mary, you were just, you made a good effort. Not enough. Not, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you stalled them enough. Um. So good, good try. All right. And now Shadow is like, haha, very satisfied. Move into a completely empty, empty Pilar gear, reinforce um, in Minas Tirith. Uh, just, yeah. So sad for free people. And now do I move? I don't know. I separate Boromir. So I'm giving up corruption for the fellowship. 
moving Boromir into Minas Tirith. And I guess I'm thinking, I really want that to hold. If I have Boromir there, it increases the chances that it holds. And at the start of next round, I can probably play House of Stewards. The problem is they have two attacks because they can use this ring to attack a second time. And they could have Onslaught or stuff like that. All right, let's see what they play. So they attack into Minas Tirith right away. I might have been tempted to play Hill Trolls first. All right. They attack in. I guess they just want to draw character cards. They're just, they're like, fine, you, you can do whatever you want. I can take as long as I want militarily if the Fellowship can never um, destroy the ring. All right, so Deadly Strife against Shield Wall. They would expect to get three to four hits. So between two and three actual damage inflicted. All right, they get only two hits below average, not like crazy below average. Two hits is on a deadly strife is like, I think 25% chance. It's, it's not likely, but all right, let's check. Let's check. All right, so I'm going to go to any dice. Let's look at just so everybody can see. Um, so here's our, here we go. Here's our graph. Um, it's not, it's not there yet. Um, the attack is, um, five dice that hit on a four or more with five leadership hitting on a four. Let's see, this is a deadly strife. I'm just typing it out. Here, let me see if everybody can. This is the, this is the funk here. I'm gonna do, this is confusing, hold on. Just so you can see. Um, this is the function that I'm using. right here. So this is, you can copy this. This is a function on any dice. It lets you calculate um, leadership and hits using this sort of, this sort of function. So I'm going to name this deadly strife over here. I know that's off screen, but all right. And now I'm going to click calculate here. And this is the distribution. All right. So I was wrong. 10% chance. All right. So only a 10% chance of getting two hits or less. And you'd expect, you'd expect to get three. So, uh, I mean, at least three, the, the average is actually 3.75. So you'd expect to get 3.75 hits. They got a 10% chance, pretty unlucky, pretty unlucky to get only that. All right. Sorry for the digression. Actually not sorry for the digression. Um, this is one of the ways we improve our play. People should know 10% chance to only get two hits if you play a Deadly Strife. That's that's good information. All right, so Shield Wall um, saves one. I'm only taking one hit, and then my Deadly Strife uh, does four. All right, so I get the more expected amount. Um, so they take four, and I take one, and they press anyway. And what are they going to play? I don't know. They don't play any card. They get two sixes, though, which is nice. And I get five hits. Boromir. Wow. He was like, I am holding Minas Tirith. All right. So that's pretty incredible. Um, and now... Holy cow. All right. So now what do they do? Now they have to use their ring to move armies. They have one victory point from Pilar Gear. All right. So he's thinking about how to move. Um, he uses a ring to move armies in. All right. So the Witch King stays which is pretty incredible. So my opponent just thinks they probably don't have Sudden Strike. That's reasonable, because I don't have Sudden Strike. And this way, by moving into La Sarnach, 
if I attack in out of Minas Tirith to try and kill the Witch King, okay, they can then immediately reconquer it or re re besiege it with these three regulars in La Sarnath. So, wow, just that's a bold Witch King. All right, I have no quarter, so a single hit against the Witch King will will now kill him. The Fellowship declares again. I've managed to heal three times in Minas Tirith. This has been a pretty epic defense in Minas Tirith. They allocate two eyes again. And let's see what I roll. All right. So I get a fine roll. I'm, I'm okay with mustering. Um, I'm happy to see Palantirs to draw and play more cards. Um, so what do you do first with, um, with this? Do you attack out and hope that they don't roll hits? Because two hits, I could just lose Minas Tirith. It is not. It is not clear to me what I should do here. Um. So. I I start by playing House of Stewards. I guess I want to draw more strategy cards. I want to power up, and I want to just hold Minas Tirith. I'm I'm actually trying to destroy the ring. I'm just going to go slowly. So. I play I play that. I get two combat cards. Confusion can be quite useful. Um, and imagine Mary still sitting here in Druiden Forest could be useful. All right. So they now have a full um, stack in Minas Tirith. Now, I could attack out right here. I could play no quarter. And I could potentially do five hit points of damage. I think that I just want to wait and let them attack into me instead. So they have quite a few good reinforcements. They have hill trolls and they have half orcs and goblin men. So they are now um, have what they need to take out Minas Tirith. Wow, they're attacking Minas Tirith without playing hill trolls. I'm I'm I guess they just want to save it for for Lorien. And they're going to play Words of Power and cycle more character cards. All right, so I play Confusion here. This, this is still a little risky for them. Not, not hugely risky, but a bunch of hits from Confusion could mess with them. Um, they get two hits against me. That's nice, two sixes. And I get one hit against them plus only one more. Oh, did I not roll it? Oh, right, because of Words of Power. So Words of Power was actually quite, quite useful there. It saved... Uh, me two extra two extra hits against them or two extra potential hits against them um yeah that's a really effective words of power uh, i get two hits they get two hits and now they just wait they're just cycling their character cards it's nice play um i muster up in rohan they attack minas tirith again they are now playing a strategy card no, they're still playing character cards. Sorry, that was my strategy card. Um, I play no quarter here. I'm just trying to whittle them down. I'm hoping that they don't that they don't win. Um, interestingly, if I had played advantageous position there, uh, that would have potentially been a better play. Um, they get two hits, which is what they need, and I get two hits back. So, yeah. Minas Tirith falls, turn eight. That's the first stronghold that they took. Boromir, I think, was worth putting in there. I mean, it did cost me two corruption. It's hard to know for sure. Um, hard to know. And certainly it was actually relatively unlikely that I held Minas Tirith as long as I did. Uh, well, I don't know. There were, there were a lot of permutations there. Um, they cycled a lot of character cards, a lot of things going on. Now, one thing to note, Foul Thing from the Deep not playable because this is a region containing a free people settlement. This has a settlement, even though it's controlled by shadow, it's still a free people settlement. So you cannot play Foul Thing from the Deep. You cannot play Isildur's Bane. So I am hoping to just move slowly and not, not get revealed, not get hit, not get revealed. Now that Minas Tirith has been conquered, there is no more healing to be done here. I'm going to start moving the Fellowship. 
I get a regular in Westmnet and Helm's Deep. They muster Nazgul around, okay. And now I move. All right, first movement and safe. All right, so a little. Uh, what's what are the chances on five dice to hit? Let's let's uh, let's take a look at that. We're gonna. This is just the um, statistics analysis. All right, so now I'm gonna change the this instead of deadly strife it's going to be just hitting on sixes so this is six or higher and the leadership is effectively two and you're hitting on a six so this is five dice on a six to see how many hits we would expect them to get um, on a hunt let's calculate that and the results are this is what we'd expect Wow, five dice? Ah, ah, sorry. No, I did it wrong. They don't have five dice. They only have three dice on the first roll. Yeah, I didn't think it was that high. All right, so let's calculate that again. So this is this is what it looks like. So 60% chance. 60% chance to get at least one hit. We don't really care if you get two or three. I mean, maybe if you draw an eye. But basically, you just want to know if you hit them or not. So 60% chance. All right, um... I think it's around 50% with four and 60% with five dice. All right, but they miss, fair enough. Uh, they move the Witch King around, they need to continue to cycle their character cards, and they need to um, continue to get victory points because eventually they need to get to 10. So we're playing we're playing a heavy corruption game. I'm moving the Fellowship very slowly. Healing for three turns in Minas Tirith, was it too long? I mean, I still now need to get to Mordor. Um, all right, Faramir's Rangers a little late. They get rid of Hill Trolls. What the heck? I feel like that's such a good card, but I guess they don't, they're just, they're, they're not worried about military. All right, so this is a level of discipline uh, focusing on, focusing on uh, corruption that uh, I just have not regularly played as Shadow. So this is, this is a lot of focus on all I care about is, Corruption, corruption, corruption. And if it takes me forever, uh, you know, a bazillion turns to get the military, it doesn't matter. I'm just max maximizing my corruption damage. All right. So they allocate three eyes because that's the most they can. And then they roll two more. And um, I would have been happy to get some musters here. Uh, it's a little nerve wracking now with these armies in East Rune and Erebor. Um, I mean, the Palantirs are okay. I can draw cards, but... I also don't mind mustering. My force pool for the elves is still decent. So I can muster up um, in Woodland Realm if needed. All right, let's see what they do. So I start by drawing a strategy card. Uh, they are attacking into Dol Amroth, and I'm guessing they're cycling uh, Black Captain Commands because, yep, Black Captain Commands. And they get 1-6. I get... Two hit, uh, no, one hit because they did play Foul Stench. So one hit against them. Nice to see that the Foul Stench actually did something. And um, they press in this case because they want to make some progress. They feel like that army is decent and they have Deadly Strife to play. Um, they get, give it to us. That's nice. And now they're probably playing Deadly Strife here. Yeah, Deadly Strife. Faramir's Rangers for Shield Wall. And now do they get a more reasonable? Right. So now they get four hits on their Deadly Strife. That's more reasonable. And I get three back. Also, wait, whoa, whoa. Oh, five back. Right. Because I had, um, I hit on fives. So they do three to me. I do five to them. A little too deadly. I have three hit points. They have four hit points. Maybe eventually they can take Dol Amroth. I draw a character card, a strategy card, more strategy cards. Um, interestingly, Rohan has only one regular and one um, leader left. So if I had taken that extra, uh, if I had taken that damage slightly differently, I would be out of hit points in Rohan. But still, I think I would have rather inflicted more Minas Tirith. That would have changed a lot of things. Okay. Um, Give it to us gets played. I move the fellowship once. 
They miss me. Seven dice. Seven dice. That, I think, is unlikely. We, we, we actually did that calculation before, and that was like 25% chance, so um, or 30% chance, something like that. So that's pretty unlikely with seven dice to get to not get any sixes. And then um, they muster an elite in North Rune. I draw another strategy card and they play Ring as Mine here. And I play King Brandsman, happy to happy to cycle that and get more um, units in uh, Dale. All right, and then I get Cairdon's Ships, which is gonna help me hold um, Help me hold Dual Amroth. All right, so they said, oh, I didn't expect that because they were expecting me, I guess, to move again and um, get revealed or something like that or just take the corruption. But my feeling is the military is so slow, I don't need to move more than once. And I'm, by the way, I'm staying in Minas Tirith because of um, Isildur's Bane and Falthing from the Deep and because of Cruel Weather. The cruel Weather cannot um, increase my number of steps if I'm in Minas Tirith because there's no way to move me somewhere that's actually farther away from Mordor. So that's why I'm enduring these, um, these rerolls in Minas Tirith. Maybe I should have spent a ring to move. I just, I didn't want to give them a ring. I didn't want to take the corruption if I didn't have to. I'd rather get in sitting at three corruption with, um, you know, six corruption in the fellowship. And I, um, yeah, I'm just not in a rush, right? Their military is too slow. Like Lorien's likely to hold. I haven't even drawn, I could draw Celeborns. Like there are a lot of cards that I could draw. All right, so um, they said they expected me to move because I had the last action, which is interesting. Maybe I should have. Would you have used a ring there to move? Um, almost certainly getting hit. Only a fifty percent, little better than 50% chance of getting revealed. Um, I guess my feeling is I'd rather take a 25% chance of getting revealed next round if I have the time. And I think I do. All right. So I will go alone. Probably not so useful. If I had still had Mary around, it could be a useful combat card. Um, I get rid of Power Tom Bombadil. Why am I keeping I will go alone? Who is going alone? That's weird. What am I what am I thinking there? I guess I'm thinking I want to get to Gollum sooner. And so maybe I'll get rid of Gimli. I don't know why I didn't keep power of Tom Bombadil over um I will go alone, given that I'm probably not playing either of them for their card effect. I would rather have advantageous position as a combat effect. Okay. Allocating an eye. Just one this time. So they only allocated one eye this time. I guess they figure I'm only moving once. So the extra extra eyes don't matter. Now I have a 50-50 chance of getting getting revealed. I mean 50-50 chance of getting hit and only 58% um, chance of getting... Yeah, only 58% chance. Of, so, so like about a 30% chance here of getting revealed. I would be very happy to make it to Mordor without getting revealed. All right, so we take a little break and then we come back. All right, so I start by moving and they hit me. So, you know, that's a little disappointing. And then they reveal me with an eye. So, and it's not even the two or the one. Like the two or the one, at least maybe they'll draw an eye on the on the Thailand uh, minus Mordor. So... The other thing that's a little awkward about this roll is that if they have Day Without Dawn, I can't wait. So it would have probably been better, if possible, to wait for my last action to move so that then if they um, if they reveal me, if this basically this 30% scenario happens, then they only have a single die 
to do nasty things to the fellowship. But I rolled two Wills of the West and no characters. So I felt like I had to um I had to move because I didn't want to be stalled a whole round again right here on turn 10. Um I guess I could have risked it. I mean Oh wow. Maybe maybe that was maybe that was wrong of me because they didn't have any strategy cards. They just drew one strategy card at the start of the round. So it was only a 1 in 13 chance they had Day Without Dawn. Ah, okay. So that was probably a mistake. I probably should have risked the Day Without Dawn knowing that I could have used a ring if I had to. And then in this 30% chance that they reveal me, I only suffer... I only suffer um, one die's worth of nastiness. Okay, so given that I did what I did, I was afraid of Day Without Dawn, not being aware that they had just only drawn one strategy card. Um, would you use Mithra Coat and Sting here? Because if I use it here, I could draw into the um, these tiles that don't reveal me, the three, uh, the two or the one, and then I'm in Minas Tirith. They can't play Foul Thing or Isildur's Bane, and um, they, I, and I don't take the extra corruption, and I stay hidden. I enter, I enter um, Mordor hidden. So, what do you do? My analysis here was the expected corruption from getting revealed right now is about. There's a total of nine corruption here. Adding up these numbers, dividing by six is one and a half. So expected corruption right now is one and a half from this draw. And for, for, if I don't use Mithril Coat and Sting, it's one and a half. Um, if I do use Mithril Coat and Sting, how much corruption is it necessarily saving me? I don't, it's hard to calculate. <laughs> uh, if I get revealed, it basically saves me effectively none. And if I don't get revealed, like two corruption is more than the one I'm taking right now. And three corruption is certainly more than the one corruption I'm taking right now. Um, so my thinking is Mithril Coat and Sting in Mordor is going to end up saving me more corruption than it will right now. So I just suck it up. And I'm like, all right, 30%. That happened. Sad for me. Um so they get to reroll. They they miss on the reroll. That's fine. And then um, I decide not to. Um, I decide not to use it. So they draw, and then they get a two. At least it's a two reveal. So that's not horrible. Um, I'm I'm I want to get the reveals out of the pool. I think I end up taking a random here because I don't want to go up to six corruption. I don't know. Okay, go up to six corruption. Interesting. That's a little nerve wracking. Um, you know, Isildur's Bane could be out there. It is out there. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm thinking with I will go alone. I guess I was thinking I would separate Gimli because I have Riders of Theoden. I see. So I was going to I was going to move once separate Gimli with Riders of Theoden to Helm's Deep and then play Riders of Theoden and then that's just then I have Riders of Theoden in Helm's Deep for this last um this last muster of a elite and a regular while the siege is going on it's like where do they get their hit points I guess I get they get their victory points over here they're not going after Rohan anyway all right, so all right, so this is like really bad outcome for the fellowship. I was pretty patient, and now they're just gonna get hammered in Mordor. Um, and I don't, I don't um, take a random here. Maybe, maybe I should have. My opponent has been really playing thoughtfully, uh, pure focus on corruption, and now they're gonna reap the rewards. Um, there is only one eye tile in there now. Uh, they're going to play 
All right, they say, well, maybe they would have cycled into Cruel Weather and then they could have played Cruel Weather to move me to Druid and Forest and then play Isildur's Bane and, um, and Foul Thing, but obviously that's quite that's quite different. All right, so they start with, um, they're just chilling out. Um, they, they see that there's nothing productive I can do to help the Fellowship. If I hide, they're just going to play Foul Thing and then, and then try and reveal me with this one, re one reveal and get an extra tile draw out of it so i'm not i'm not hiding um but it's going to be painful all right they reinforce in umbar that i muster my last in uh rohan maybe i should be maybe i should be getting dwarves to war maybe i should be getting north to war maybe i should just be passing um probably should probably should just be passing i don't know why i need to do that, that muster right there um yeah, probably better to get Dale close to war. See what's going to happen with with these armies in uh, East Rune and South Rune. All right, so they play Foul Thing to try and catch um, Strider or Gimli or um, Mary, and they had a you know a good chance of drawing a one, which would have been perfect, um, but they get the eye, so twenty percent chance of getting the eye. They know for sure that Isildur is going to hit. So, all right. They, it's interesting. I might have tried, I might have tried Lure of the Ring first. I guess it doesn't, it doesn't really matter either way with, with Foul Thing first or Lure of the Ring first. All right. Um, they muster more in Umbar. I'm now starting to pass. And now they play, um, Shadows gather to get to Lamadon. And if I had been passing all around here, like I could have now gotten dwarves one away from war. Yeah, why didn't why didn't I progress the dwarves to war? I didn't need to move these armies around in Westemnet to Helm's Deep and Fords of Eisen. That, that was already well defended enough. Yeah, I think that was a misplay of my those two musters. It would be much better to get um, North one away from war or Erebor one away from war, Doors one away from war. Or maybe even muster, I guess I'm thinking about mustering once in Woodland Realm. I could have considered that. All right, so they move armies to East Rune and now have a full stack in Dol Amroth. And then I play Cairden Ships because why not? Um, I would like to defend Dol Amroth. I need to give the Fellowship as much time as possible. Um, I don't want to lose Woodland Realm, but, you know, present problem first. So now I have seven hit points against nine hit points here in Dol Amroth. Like, I should still be able to hold um, Dol Amroth against this, but they're going to cycle, I guess. That's that's interesting. So I might have I might have played Lure of the Ring there, because it's too expected damage. I guess they want to keep the Fellowship high on corruption going into Mordor, and they're just going to play Lure of the Ring for one damage when the Fellowship gets revealed. But the thing is, it's two corruption damage now, expected. All right. I, yeah, I probably would have not bothered to attack into Helm's Deep right now and just instead played Lure of the Ring, play as Elder's Bane. All right, so they cycle Flocks of Corbain. That's fine. Do I have anything to play here? Yeah. So nothing really useful. I'm saving Riders of Theoden for some strategy card, but they don't actually have any strategy cards to play. I guess I'm like, I'm going to get rid of I Will Go Alone no matter what. So, all right. They get two hits. I get two hits back and they stop. And um, then I play Elven Cloaks. Okay. They play Isildur's Bane and they get a three. So I'm not, I'm still not going to use um, Mithra Coat and Sting on that. It will save me, you know, one or two corruption, but really this gets it out of the pool. So, all right. Um, yeah. So I, I just, I, there was a lot that, of bad things that happened because I got revealed and it could have been even worse if they played Lord of the Ring. 
Um, all right, they finally drew into Balrog, which will be useful in um, Lorien. I drew into Celeborns, which will be useful in Lorien, potentially. I only have one regular left. I only have regulars left in the Force Pool, but... All right, so I declare the Fellowship. They are feeling much less happy. They were at three, and now they're up to nine. Less good. All right, turn 11, Mordor. Great, great. All right, they allocate three eyes. They roll one more, and... Uh, I get a pretty flexible roll here. I start by hiding the Fellowship. They're moving armies around to defend against Path of the Woeses, which um, was open for a while, but um, I think I played it or discarded it. Um, oh, right. Maybe I wanted to draw it sooner. That's why I was drawing all of those strategy cards. Yeah, Path of the Woeses was still out. So that definitely could have caused some trouble for them if I had ever drawn it. I was down to only five cards and I could have really caused some trouble with that. So maybe that's why I was mustering up in Rohan. All right, um, I got to move the Fellowship at least a little bit. Their military is going. Um, so, you know, this is a pretty bad hunt pool, but... Maybe I can survive it. That's a good start. Zero is a good start. I did have one, two, three, four, five, um, <clears throat> six tiles that were good. Um, the The stops wouldn't have been good, but uh, as long as it wasn't an I, I'm probably okay. All right, so they get the Mouth of Sauron. I draw a character card because... Now that Path of the Woes is blocked, what else can I do? I want to get as much healing as possible. I get rid of I Will Go Alone. And what did I discard at the start of the turn? Did I have to discard at the start of the turn? I guess I didn't have to discard. I didn't have to discard. Okay. Okay. Um, they move armies around. They have now completely blocked off Path of the Woeses. I use my musters to play um, Caliborn's Galadrium. It gets me one extra regular. Is that worth it? Daylight is a pretty powerful combat effect. And they're not really going after... Lorien, I guess I figure they will eventually go after Lorien, and I want to cycle my combat cards. All right, Guards of the Citadel, a little late. They muster in Dol Golder, and now they're going to come up. They're going to come up and attack Woodland Realm. So I move armies around. They attack into Erebor, and that's that. So I still, oh right, I still haven't drawn Dane's. Dane Ironfoot's guard. Did I did I play it at some point earlier? I think I would have saved that, right? Um, all right. I, I think I still have Dane, so I'm trying to draw for Dane Ironfoot's guard or um, Path of Woes. Now it doesn't matter. All right. There's another way. Very happy to see that Spirit of Mordor could be useful on Lorien. All right, I get rid of Book of Mazarbal and Guards of the Citadel. Those are pretty easy choices there. And they allocate three eyes because they can. Let's see if they roll any more. They don't roll any more. All right, so I'm happy to see that. I only get one movement. Probably would have been happier with a little bit more movement. Would have been happy with Palantirs to get to play Bilbo Song or There's Another Way, depending on how this movement goes. Um, but I start by moving. And now if I get an eye, all right, so, you know, Obviously, I would prefer. Um, I would. I would. I would prefer a negative two. That would be great. But but getting an eye out for three damage is fine. I get to lose Strider efficiently. I'm gonna. You know, the Fellowship is going. Needs to make some progress, but probably okay. Um, militarily, still. Hopefully, Dol Amroth can hold. Erebor is probably gonna fall. I would really like to get Dane. All right, Strider's gone. Fellowship is revealed. They attack Dol Amroth. 
Oh, right. They're trying to draw into candles of corpses, right? That's what I'm worried about. And there's really nothing, there's really nothing I can do about it. Um, I didn't draw enough movement and they can just win the game with candles of corpses. Um, and I'd like to get to Gollum for that reason. Probably that's why I should have taken a random earlier in, um, back in Mordor when I got revealed from, from the, um, when I moved in the two being drawn when I was landing in Mordor. Um, okay. So they actually just going back to the lure of the ring play earlier, they are holding on to lure of the ring because of candles of corpses, I think is what's happening. They're going to try, they think they believe that, um, they can get to candles of corpses before I get down to Gollum. Uh, which is a difference of a whole corruption, and then they can still play Lure of the Ring to get some damage. So that's that's pretty great. Um, they are attacking into Dol Amroth, and I need to hold Dol Amroth because if Dol Amroth falls and Erebor falls, then that's that's probably too too many victory points for Shadow. I need to go slowly next round and the round after so that the eyes don't build up to too much um, damage. All right, so they play Worm Tongue. I play Heroic Death. They don't get any hits. Um, I don't get any hits back. So, you know, I would have liked to get some hits there, but probably okay to still hold that. Seven hit points on their part, five on my part. I did use up a good combat card in the form of Heroic Death. Um, I still have Daylight, so another Daylight. All right, so that's that. And um, I muster the north towards war. Okay, probably too little too late. They drew into candles of corpses. So this can win the game. If they get if they get three corruption, they just win. I just, I knew this was coming and there was nothing I could do about it. I just have to hope that they don't get too much corruption. They get one. All right, so we expect one and a half. They get one. I'm up to 10. Scary. Uh, I muster the... North more towards war, they get another elite in Dol uh, Golder. I muster. I pass here. Interesting. Okay. Um. They move towards the north with this army. Okay. Um. I get my last Elven regular into Woodland Realm. And that's only half a muster. I have literally nothing else that I can muster. I don't have any place to muster these Gondorians. The North is not yet at war. That's how it goes. So maybe I should have... Yeah, I don't I don't know exactly what I should have done here. Maybe Dale should have been mustered up faster. Um, you know, all of these shenanigans over here with... Um, the two musters last round in in Wood, in Rohan, if they had been getting either doors to war or north to war, maybe things would have been different here. All right, so they attack into Old Forest Road. They don't play a card, and I don't play a card either. Weird. Why don't I play scouts here? All right, somehow that guy lives. I don't understand why. Um... And now I muster an elite in Dale because I'm just going to cause a bunch of trouble there. If the, getting one extra regular into Woodland Realm didn't seem worth it to me. So Erebor attacks Dale. I play Daylight here because I want to make sure that elite lives. They get one hit. I get two hits back. And now I'd lose my two, they press, and now I have a pretty good army in Woodland Realm, and they've taken over Dale. So, yeah, this is a strong defensive do. I don't know exactly what they could have done differently. I expected this army in Old Forest Road actually to come over here to Lorien to try and take out Lorien, because they have Balrog. So maybe they think this army is good enough to take out Lorien with Balrog as is. Also, they moved off of Erebor. I guess they needed to, they needed to subjugate the north up there. All right. Um, so I draw Athalas. Happy to see that. 
um, one expected healing, and they allocate two eyes, obviously, and roll no more. So I'm happy to see that. And then I get this beautiful roll. This is a really good roll. Um, exactly what I want to be seeing at this point in the game. They have a good amount of military now. They probably wanted more eyes um, because there still are uh, four eyes in the hunt pool. But um, that's how it goes. They have Lure of the Ring. That's the only thing left to damage the Fellowship. And uh, I start by hiding because obviously I don't want to have anything horrible happen. And then um, I play Athalos because, you know, in case there's like a Shelob or something like that. I'm going to play it eventually, so I might as well play it now. Um, and I get no healing. So expected healing one, I get zero. That's very sad. Um, I said maybe mine would be better than yours because last game they played Athalos and got zero healing. I also got zero healing. All right. Sad, sad. Um, and they attack into Woodland Realm. I go into Siege, putting an Elven regular back into the Force Pool. So there were some weird permutations that I ended up. Remember, that was that was the one that was like a full muster worth of, of uh, die and it just goes back into the hit, uh, reinforcement pool. So um, I have to worry a little bit about um, Rivendell being um, captured at some point because I don't have any more elves. Now I have one. This northern elite can possibly get over there. And now this is interesting. I could potentially muster in Carrick to cause some trouble. Um, but all right. I think I, I pass here. Why? I'm just going to wait and see what's happening. They move Nazgul around. All right. Now they attack into Woodland Realm. They play a strategy card now. What happened to Theoden? Did I play it? I played it on Dale? That's where I played Theoden? Interesting. All right. They play Rage of the Dunlendings now. It's a perfect, perfect play for it. Um, I have a sudden strike of two. I get one hit. They get three hits against me. I get five hits. Holy cow. So their military is um, really just going slow. All right. So I take my damage. Um I have four regulars against their seven hit points, probably enough to hold that. Um, that was eight hits in a round if we count the two from Relentless. So eight hits in Woodland Realm is pretty good. Um, and now I play Spirit of Mordor against this army because um, I can, and that may really hold Woodland Realm. So I get one hit, you know, it helps a little. And uh, they muster up. They have to muster up in North Rune. They know that they can't take it. Um, they're moving armies around. Where did they just move from? North Rune to Vale of Karnan and Dimrul Dale to Moria. So they're giving up on Lorien. They're like definitely not taking Lorien. And instead they're going towards Rivendell, I guess, is their plan. Um... I think about what to do, and I use an army movement to go this northern unit from Etmores to Trollshaws and Fords of Eisen to West of Net. I'm not sure why I'm not drawing a character card here. Um, I guess I'm thinking I can go liberate Minas Tirith, but... I can, I'm going to move once. I see. Maybe I'm just, I'm like, there's going to, I'm going to get stopped. Like the hunt pool has four stop tiles in it. Chances of me getting stopped are quite high. I only want to move once this round. I don't know. Why not try moving? I think probably try moving once first and then seeing what happens. I was, I was probably a little out of order. They didn't have any rings. They only had one Palantir. So they only have two character, four character it's left. So yeah. I guess I'm not sure what they have left to hurt the Fellowship. Um, they move armies around. They have now gotten to Dale. 
And where did the other army move? From Nern to Gorgoroth. Yeah, I guess they're just preparing to come defend Minas Tirith. And now I move the Fellowship, and I get the one stop. Okay, so I'm not going to use I'm not going to use uh, Mithril Coat and Sting on that. I don't think. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I am. Would you use Would you use Mithril Coat and Sting here? Like I think what I'm really afraid of is an eye that does a bunch of damage. But I guess I also want to keep making progress. Getting stopped is bad. An eye right now isn't that bad. So if I redraw into an eye, it's okay. Um, no, I just take it. So I guess my read on the situation is I have plenty of time militarily. I'm, we're on round 13. And I'm just like, sure, I'll eat that red tile. No problem. I take a random. It doesn't matter what it is because now... The fact that I lost Pippin, though that's efficient, they have Lure of the Ring. So Lure of the Ring does two this way. They got to play Candles of Corpses. They got to play Lure of the Ring for two. And um, beautiful. Just beautiful play on their part. They have done everything they possibly could to hurt the Fellowship. They've allocated max eyes. And I am now at um, 10 Corruption with three steps to go. I do have Bilbo's song. I do have There Is Another Way. So I don't, you know, I was foreseeing this. They're, they've been doing a lot. I've been doing a lot. Um, I was very patient in Minas Tirith. Healed three in Minas Tirith. Um, so they only roll one eye. So yeah, so the danger now to the Fellowship is if Shadow happens to roll a bunch of eyes and then I draw an eye. So it's not like it's not a huge risk, but it is certainly some. All right. Um, they get a bunch of musters now. Not really what they want to see at this point in the game. They can make use of it. Um, all right. So I start by hiding with the fellowship. I know that I'm using the Will of the West for fellowship related purposes. So it's fine to do that. I don't want to risk Day Without Dawn. They play Shadows on Misty Mountains. They Yeah, so they have a bunch of good mustering to do. They muster up um, some units in um, Moria and Minus Morgul. I wonder, are they... Yeah, so why not just get another Elite? Like, do you really care about Minus Morgul that much? All right. Regulars in Minus Morgul and Dol Golder. Okay. I guess they're worried about Rohan. They're like, Rohan can do crazy things. Um, it's possible. So they mustered up a little bit in Orthanc. They mustered up in Minus Morgul some more. All right. Now I start playing my character cards. I play Bilbo Song here. Um, and I guess my plan is I'm only going to move once this round and so i'm gonna save there's another way for next round there's no real rush in playing it it's a little bit of a risk if i get sh hit by shelob and um get a high number rolled but probably i'll just use mithril if i get hit by shelob so all right so they move armies around they're reinforcing minas tirith if i had hurried a little bit more with this army in Westmnet, i could have gotten to minas tirith first but you know, I had productive things to do. So I reinforce, I get this uh, elite from North Downs to Edmores to Trollshaws to Rivendell. It's not an impossible move if a game goes really long and you've used up the Elven force pool. And um, I threaten with this army in um, full West of Net to Fold to eventually come into Minas Tirith. And they do not have, interestingly, they, they only have character dice left and they don't have... Um, uh, Nazgul uh, at South Athelion. So so I can attack into Minas Tirith, potentially, with this army. Um, they attack Woodland Realm. They manage to reinforce Woodland Realm. They play Desperate Battle and get four hits. So see you later. I get four hits back. All right. It matters a little. Those hits matter a little because now, like, how are they going to take Erebor? Eventually, I'm going to draw Dane. Oh, right. See, sorry. I drew Dane this round. So, um, you know, now they uh, are going to have some trouble taking Erebor. 
They're up to they're up to five victory points. It's turn fourteen. I definitely have to hold um, Delamroth. I guess this army is going to come from Moria to try and take out Lorien, um, and that's why they didn't muster more in Moria. Uh, and now I attack into Druid Forest. Uh, I get one hit. They get a hit back, which is actually a pretty critical hit. It makes it that much less likely that I'm going to be able to take out Minas Tirith. Ah, uh, they had Shadows moving. Did they just redraw that? I think they just redrew that from, um, from the Desperate Battle. Wow. So if they did not redraw that, they would have been in serious trouble in Minas Tirith. So now they get to bring armies in. Whoa, they are going for they are going for Rivendell. All right, so they moved South Athelion to Osgiliath. They moved Moria to Holland, not going after not going after Lorien. And they moved Woodland Realm to Dale. And anything else? Gorgoroth to minus Morgul. So they're just playing a very safe game. The reason why I guess they didn't want this army to come to um, Lorien is they didn't want to risk a, a military victory from me. Um, which is possible. All right. And now I move the fellowship. And I get a one. So that is excellent. Uh, you know, that is the third best tile I could draw. I, these two ones are great. Um, you know, even an eye doing two damage, it's not great. Um, but two damage is probably okay for me at this point to get another eye out of the pool. Um, obviously, a one is better. But really, the only tiles I definitely wanted to avoid at this point were the red tiles. And I did have to throw a coat for that. All right. So I reveal... Because I'm like, I got time. Your military isn't, you're not getting to 10 victory points next round. Um, and they attack in Dol Amroth. I'm like, oh no, I hope they're not getting to 10 victory points. Um, and now I think I play, I don't want to play There's Another Way. That's too good. Um, Dane, I probably play Dane here. They play a character card. Um, and... Yeah, I expected something to hurt the Fellowship, but they didn't have it. So they play Crowweather. I play Dean Ironfoot's Guard because I think to myself, I have to hold... Okay, I pretty much have to hold... Um, Wood, uh, Dol Amroth? Maybe... Maybe I should have just saved that for Erebor, but I'm like, this is enough. I can defend Erebor. All right, so I play Dean Ironfoot's Guard for the combat effect in Dol Amroth because I really want to try and hold it and this deals an extra damage effectively. They get two hits against me. I get one hit against them. So that is not good for me. And um, and I wasted Dane. Feels sad. Um, I have Dead Men of Dunharrow now and The Last Battle. Happy to see the daylight. That can be good. And um, they allocate one eye, only roll one more, and I get um, this roll, which I would have preferred a little more movement, um, but that's not horrible. The thing about there is another way is that the die does not go into the hunt pool. So if I had a bunch of movement, I could basically move once without adding with, with there is another way and then move a second time without risking um any extra damage from corruption. So I had the fellowship. They muster in uh, North Rune. So now I'm like, uh-oh, they actually could get to 10 victory points. If they take Dol Amroth um, and they take Erebor, they actually could get to 10 victory points. So, yeah. And they also have potential threats against um, Rivendell. So I play there as another way now because I would like to know if I have a chance of destroying the ring or not. Um, I heal one, and um, I get Smeagol Helps Nice Master. So obviously that is huge. The fact that I have been able to save Mithril until now means that, um, and I managed to heal, 
uh, means that I have a, a really good chance of destroying the ring. And I think, you know, I did choose to keep Mithril even when I drew a red tile earlier in the in the a run up Mordor. So I have gotten two blue tiles and one red tile. Um, and I did get an eye, but when I got the eye, it was when there was only three eyes in there. So, um, you know, I think the luck has been probably in my favor in Mordor, but not like crazy, crazy in my favor. I've just been able to go so slowly because the military has been so slow for Shadow. Um, so they're mustering up in Rune. I'm, I'm passing. I have a ring left. They move armies around. They move armies around. They move armies around. They have now reinforced um, Dol Amroth and Erebor. And um, I draw a character card. I don't know exactly why. We proved the Swifter, if I had drawn that slightly sooner, would have been better. To, I could use that in Dol Amroth and get Gandalf in there. Um, Oh, right. I don't have any strategy cards. I have zero strategy cards remaining. So that's why I drew a character card. Uh, all right. So they attack in Erebor. We'll see how this battle goes. Um, they cancel my daylight. Very nice. They get one hit. I get one hit back. They press. They um, don't play a card, but they get a six and I get one hit back and uh, they press and now they play Onslaught. I play Sudden Strike, anticipating the Onslaught, just trying to do as much damage as I can. The Sudden Strike um, hits for one. Um, they get one hit against me, and I don't get, I only get one hit on my um, combat roll. So the dwarves just didn't quite dish out enough damage. And now um, they Onslaught for four. Um, I need to take a hit. So I actually only have three hit points remaining. And they're onslaughting for four. So I, I lose a hit. That's from the normal um, combat roll. And now they lose four because they know that they need to um, get to 10 victory points this round. And they get their three hits. So that was just a beautiful play in Erebor. They saved onslaught for exactly the right moment. Um, just really well played. And now I'm in trouble because I have to, I think, risk destroying the ring they have one attack remaining with the um, with the mouth. I'm going to uh, attack into Minas Tirith just to mess with them. And now if they, say, use this die to attack in Dol Amroth, then I'll know whether or not I have to destroy the ring. Otherwise, you know, I'm probably just going to wait. All right, so, whoa. Okay, so they attack Dol Amroth right now. Which is a little weird because otherwise I would be able to wait until next round. All right. Interesting. So they attack it. They play Relentless Assault. Um, I don't have any card. They got a bad roll. Uh, they get zero hits. Very unlikely um, with Relentless Assault. And I get one hit back. So now I know that Dole Amroth is going to hold. Um, there's there's no card that they have that could attack in Dole, in Dole Amroth. Um, so there's no card that they could play in Lorien. I mean, there's just no way. So they've already played Black Captain Commands. They've already played Ring Wraiths or Broad. So my thinking is right here, I could give them a ring and move the fellowship. And I have an extremely good chance of destroying the ring because, um, they would have to draw two red tiles in a row to stop me. But if they do draw two red tiles in a row and they do stop me, then I've given them a ring and then they could attack in Dol Amroth and maybe they have, I don't know, Deadly Strife. I don't know. They don't have, they don't have any strategy cards. So I don't really know what I'm waiting for here. Um, if I wait until next round, then I risk that they draw, um, that they roll more eyes. And then if I do the two red tiles, then eyes become deadly. So, yeah, I, I think I should just move here. Um, it, it's dumb. I should just give them an eye. I should just give them a ring and move. They can't get to 10 victory points this round. I mean, very unlikely to roll three sixes on. Well, that's not entirely true. If they have, if there's something that gives them like cruel as death or 
they're terrible, then it's possible that this Dole Amroth army could get 10 victory points. So I guess that's why I'm waiting. I just don't want to risk them getting 10 victory points at Dole Amroth. If I give them a ring, draw two red tiles. Okay. So whatever. So I wait. Um, I muster a elite in Bree, because why not? All right, then we go to next round. Um, maybe there was one blue tile left in the pool. I get this crazy roll. They have four eyes, so that's not good. I'm just going to move now. I guess my thinking is if I move now and they get the two red tiles, which is the only thing that stops me, then I can still hide and move again and still have a chance of, of winning. So that's what I'm doing. So I move uh, and we get the negative two. All right. So I don't know. Maybe it was better to just try last round um, and use a ring last round. But yeah. So turn 16, Fellowship ends on four corruption. They entered Mordor at nine corruption is the way they entered Mordor. And they ended on four corruption because Strider soaked up damage, Gimli soaked up damage, or Gimli was lost to the Lord of the Ring. Um, Pippin soaked up damage. And then I got a negative one blue tile, a negative two blue tile, and I played Bilbo's song, and I played theirs another way. So, and they got candles of corpses for one. So a net loss of corruption of five, healing of five corruption while climbing up Mount Doom. Um, Frodo was like, this was a great hike. I really enjoyed it. And Gollum was like, yeah, I'll help you. And they're like, yeah, great. Let's just toss this ring in. <laughs> like, great. Toss it in. Uh, yeah. And I never used Mithril Coat and Sting. So this was never used. So, you know, um, <laughs> that's how it goes. Could have lost it to Warren with Sauron Toil. Could have used it when I was trying to get into Minus Morgul. Could have used it when I drew the red tile in, um, you know, on the third or fourth movement, I guess, third movement. And just, yeah. Wow. So what a crazy game. Um, obviously, Mordor could have gone quite differently if I had drawn more red tiles. Um, I did have Mithril Coat and Sting to mitigate at least one of them, but, you know, could have drawn more. Um, as it turns out, I drew three three blue tiles. In the end, that that third blue tile didn't matter. It was really anything other than a red. Um, so very interesting game. I, I feel really pleased with this game. It was, it was interesting and I felt like I was reading the military situation properly and gave the fellowship just the right amount of time to, um, to get the job done. So let's look at statistics. Uh, a lot of dice rolled. These are flipped. So they were minus two on sixes. Um, I was plus five on sixes. Uh, it was pretty, pretty swingy combats. Um, they were pretty high on musters that they came a lot at the end there. Um, in the end, I, I don't think they really cared that much about this stuff. They wanted eyes and they wanted palantirs and, um, they, they really just stayed to their plan and they had some chances for sure, but that's how it goes. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I am now on to the top four. Have a good rest of the day.